Coming up on AAA's Discover Oklahoma, cowboys and culture, our trip to one of our state's great museums, plus food that will make your mouth water. Travel with AAA's Discover Oklahoma. Welcome to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dino Lawley. We're coming to you from what has to be not only one of the best museums and institutions in the state, but literally around the world. This is the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum that has been here atop Persimmon Hill in Oklahoma City for going on 50 years now. It is an iconic Oklahoma destination. And it's the perfect place to learn how the West was won. First established in 1955 as the Cowboy Hall of Fame, it was in the year 2000 that the name was changed to the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. Well, that allowed us then to, to present more of the story of the American West. Our mission, you know, was to begin with uh, one to recognize individuals, but also in time there was a, a great collection of Western art that was accumulated, and, and after the 90s we started telling more of the story of the American West with a capital W-E-S-T. It's here you will find a true presentation of the American West, its history, and kaleidoscope of cultures. That's accomplished through the various exhibits, impressive world-class art, educational programs, and events. And while different exhibits come through the museum, there are the public favorites, such as the full-scale western town known as Prosperity Junction. It's uh, almost 13,000 square feet. 38 foot high ceiling, so the idea is to go in there and we want to take the, the visitor, take the audience back in time to a, a western community. In the 1890s, maybe turn of the century, of course everybody in Oklahoma City uh, understands and knows that the, the end of the trail sculpture uh, by James Earl Frazier uh, is an anchor piece and, and, and somewhat an icon of the American West, which you'll see in, in, in gift shops and in uh, art galleries, you know, in one phase or another all, all over the United States but uh, it, it was obtained here and first dedicated to the public uh, in 1970 and so it's been associated with our institution for, for quite a while. The large marble cougar known as the Canyon Princess is another favorite and then there's the art like the world famous immigrants crossing the plains which was painted in 1867 and of course the museum's yearly prestigious exhibit called Pre de West. There are whole sections of, of uh, presentations in the museum, like the contemporary Western art. Uh, our institution, in terms of its art program, that's what it's really known for, working with contemporary living painters of the American West. And in particular, how they portray the light in the West, as well as just uh, the Native Americans and the cowboys, you know, and, and their working traditions and, and the romance of, of those, those things, and then sometimes the action. Visitors come here literally from all over the world, and the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum has a national and international audience. People who have an interest, an enchantment, a love for the American West. Some people come here just to see the John Wayne collection, uh, and other people come here just to see the art collection, because that's what their interest is. Uh, and then there are rodeo fans, because we're kind of a Canton, Ohio of, of rodeo. Uh, and so they come to see the, the collections and the saddles and the stories of, of the great rodeo champions. You'll also find at the museum store wonderful books, clothing, Native American jewelry, pottery, and more. We've got a unique offering, I think, that reflects the American West and, and what is uh, available to the public in, in the museum store. But regardless of the reason you come here, you'll walk away with an endearing love for the American West, our region, and its people. And that is the, the heart of the real mission of this institution, is to tell that story, the story of those people that are living today, the, the heritage of those that have gone before, and, and why. There is so much to see here. Just plan your visit on our website, travelok.com. Just click on Discover Oklahoma. And if you visit the Cowboy before May 11th, you'll have the opportunity to view a really extraordinary collection of the works of Walter Ufer and Alan Hauser, two of the greatest artists of the Southwest. When we talk about the history of the Southwest or the West itself, we're not always talking about artworks. How about food? There's a diner down in Norman that has been serving up great chow since 1890. Quintran has the story. 
It's a one-way street in downtown Norman. Just travel east and you're sure to find it, the old-fashioned diner on Main Street. The nostalgic setup and atmosphere. People come in here and they're like, oh, this is just like when I was a kid. Everyone is welcome inside the popular diner seven days a week for breakfast and lunch. It can be a tight fit, only 50 seats. Call it the diner dance when it gets real tight because you're, you know, skimming by people this way and that way. You good on your coffee? There's always coffee brewing, something sizzling on the grill, and hearty portions are served up. I like the greasiness. I love greasy in my breakfast, so. <laughs> this is what they call the tamale omelet. It has two tamales in it. Uh, all of the ingredients are fresh. I like it because it's a, uh, it's hometown. Uh, a lot of regulars in here. It's kind of a morning social thing. And uh, the food is excellent. Uh, I'm not sure how healthy this is, but it's very, very good. <laughs> So good that regulars like Joe Griffith visit the diner daily. Yeah, Joe comes in every day and eats. This is his donkey and his goat and his, his <laughs> Hi, parrot. How are you? Hi, come on in. And, um, and we have another customer, Jim. He comes every day. If they don't show up, we go find them or call them. You know, they're important. It's been important to owner Claire Amspatcher and her daughter Bonnie to keep this diner up and running as is. Little has changed on the menu over the years. For the past two decades, the diner has served classic American and Tex-Mex cooking. But the diner does have quite a history. This restaurant here has been continuously run for over 100 years. It was built in 1890 and um, so it's gone through a lot of families. People often come back, some leave happy faces on the diner's walls. Any picture you bring, we'll put it up. This is our, our cook's newborn right here. This picture of my late husband. This is Calvin, he comes by every day and sells uh, the Norman Transcript newspaper. And uh, Jim, he visits, er, eats every day. And he takes half his food home for his dog. <laughs> Very happy dog. I like to pay attention to the details and just make people happy. You know, when you go out to eat, it should be a pleasant experience, and that's what we try for. You can't leave unless you're full, but we have to-go boxes too. You can't eat it all. The diner is best known for this. It's award-winning chili. The delicious family recipe passed down three generations. We make our chili homemade from scratch, 100% Angus beef, and uh, twice a week a 40 pound pot we make, and uh, a little bit of everything. We have all the good spices, and don't want to tell all the secrets. She says there's no secret, though, to running the diner. Claire's recipe is very simple. I like cooking, I like good food, and I like people. And put a little love in it, and you know, it's just nice. Find out how to see the diner's daily special and check out other hot spots to hit Norman on our website, travelok.com. It's all in the Discover Oklahoma section. You know, there's one thing that never seems to change about Oklahoma, and that is we love a good cup of coffee. Absolutely, and you won't believe how far one Tulsa company is going to brew a better cup of joe. We're headed to Topeka Coffee coming up. Also ahead, how a pit stop on I-35 can open the eyes of kids or grandkids. That's all coming up on AAA's Discover Oklahoma. On the road, one never knows what lies ahead. Indubitably, almost every week, one encounters bad form from Sunday drivers. Sheer rudeness begets the occasional fender bender. Precisely why we have insurance from AAA. Hear, hear. A name drivers can trust. Especially good ones. Especially great ones. Cheers! Come on, my every night. My honey lemon eye. Sit alone and talk. Watch your heart. Make a crazy circle to the sky. You know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is red. Oklahoma, come see for yourself. Daddy, Daddy, look, a beaver. Oh, he 
He's so cute. Oh, no, 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 no. Until there's an impenetrable force field to protect your car from woodland creatures, there's the next best thing, insurance from AAA. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Chuck Wagon here at the Gallery of the American Cowboy, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum. You know, Jennifer, cowboys, they're ringing the dinner bell now. <laughs> cowboys have always known a good cup of coffee, and it comes to no surprise as one Tulsa company really has a corner on the market when it comes to an international blend. Jason Grubbs has the story of Topeka Coffee in Tulsa. Ah, that tasty cup of joe. It's a must for many, morning and afternoon. Topeka Coffee has been providing that much needed daily jolt to Oklahomans for more than a decade. Its downtown Tulsa Cafe in the Mayo Hotel was originally the roastery. We were uh, receiving bags of coffee through the front door uh, by the truck pool. And uh, it was actually when the whole building, we were the first tenants in the building before it uh, was reopened and, and renovated. Ian Pico is the director of coffee for the company. He says Topeka came about after coffee bean prices started dropping, creating a financial hardship on the farmer. Coffee is a seed. There's two typically uh, seeds or beans per cherry, and a coffee cherry looks like a cranberry. John Gabarino and his wife's family, which has owned an El Salvador coffee bean farm since the 1850s, decided to cut out the middleman, taking their product directly from the producer to the consumer, creating a seed to cup operation. And so when you come and buy a bag of coffee from us, you're actually getting it from the people who grew it. Today, the roastery is just outside of downtown, processing 100 to 120,000 pounds of coffee beans every year, and not just from the family farm. These are from Central America, South America, uh, Indonesia, Africa and uh, these are coming from different growing regions within different countries. Creating a wide range of specialty flavors, much like fine wines. The coffee's a fruit, so just like any other fruit, there are thousands of different varietals and they all taste different one to the next. You can actually taste the, the, the origin, the soil, uh, the processing of the coffee. The beans arrive here in big burlap bags and stored in this climate-controlled room where the temperature is kept at about 65 degrees, humidity at 60%. It makes an enormous difference on the longevity of the quality of the coffee. From there, the beans are separated into bins and poured into the roaster. It, it comes out of the roaster and goes immediately up into the packager uh, and then sealed. And it's very easy to tell how fresh this coffee is. Just look on the bottom and you got a roasting date. John says about two years ago, the company purchased a special machine allowing Topeka to say its product has zero defects. If it finds one that has a defect, it blows air and blows it out. I always say it's one bad apple and an apple pie is going to ruin the pie. The roastery isn't just used for processing. The public can take part in educational programs and tasting sessions, even barista training. The entire operation is helping to create a coffee mecca in Oklahoma. We've really set a standard of what specialty coffee can be, um, but we're really big about education. Much like the family farm, many of the employees in El Salvador have been around for generations. Their photos line the cafe walls. John says his goal with Topeka is to leave a lasting legacy, much like the one where his beans have been growing for about 160 years. And I also want something that puts Tulsa on the map for something positive and to show that just because we're in the Midwest doesn't mean we don't know what good coffee is. In Tulsa, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. There is so much here at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, or the Cowboy, if you prefer. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier to remember to learn about our Western heritage. It's just one of the few places to learn actually about the history behind the Old West in our state. All right, ahead, we're going to make a stop in Ardmore and bring the kids along for a glance at the good old days. And you can't miss this story, three words, hot, fudge, nachos. We'll <laughs> tell you where you can get them when AAA's Discover Oklahoma returns. A little old lady. <laughs> Little old lady drove me onto a center island and it was right across from where my insurance agent's office was. He just took over. I was impressed because within three days, I think, I got a, a phone call from an adjuster uh, asking how things were going. And then I got an honest to gosh handwritten note 
from her. And uh, she said, Mr. Phelps, I hope that uh, we're doing a good job for you. If you have any problems, please feel free to call. Uh, she left me, I think, two phone numbers on the, the card telling me where everybody could be reached, if she couldn't be reached, who I could call. It was really meaningful to me. I thought it was really, really nice. They have actually done more than I anticipated uh, my insurance company would do. It was AAA standards. It was great. AAA, to me, uh, means A+, plus, A+, plus, A+. Plus. And I don't think you can get any better than A+, plus, A+, plus, A+. Plus. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. You know, in the age of smartphones, tablets, laptops, <laughs> whatever you have, information is always at our fingertips. It seems so easy to stop there, but there's no substitute for coming out to a museum like this one. Checking it out yourself with your own two eyes and your own two hands. Tina McGarry takes us to just such a place in Ardmore. The old limestone building that houses the Greater Southwest Historical Museum is itself a piece of history. Built in the mid-1930s, it was the National Guard Armory and later housed one of Ardmore's local hotspots. Many people come in and say, oh, I used to roller skate here. And so we still have the signs from the original roller skating rink. The museum tells the story of South Central Oklahoma. Exhibits feature the way of life for Oklahoma's early farmers, families, shoppers, and citizens. Visitors can even learn about education. A one-room schoolhouse shows just how far we've come. And a reminder of what life was like before electricity and running water. This cabin was built in the 1890s, years before Oklahoma even became a state. It's one of the original cabins from this area. The cabin was taken apart, then pieced back together inside the museum. Visitors can literally walk through history and get a feel for what life was like at the turn of the 20th century. The buttons are different on each uniform. One wing of the museum is dedicated to our service men and women. We think we have one of the finer military museums in the United States. And uh, we try to change our exhibits out and uh, to show something new so we can keep people coming back. The Military Memorial Museum lets visitors get hands-on. It shows off military weapons, medals, photographs, and uniforms. We're very fortunate. We have the uniforms of all seven uniformed services in the United States. I think it's extremely unique. I'm not sure there's any other place in the United States that has all seven of the uniforms displayed together. No matter your age, you're sure to learn something new. And this walk through history will leave you with an appreciation and understanding for what shaped life in South Central Oklahoma. My favorite part of the museum is the exhibit on the explosion that happened in 1915 near the train station. And it was a train car that was full of gas and on a hot September day in Oklahoma, 100 degrees, the gas blew up so <laughs> the whole town blew up basically and rebuilt but the town has been rebuilt twice once in a fire once through that gas explosion. The museum is just the start of the fun in Ardmore. Plan something else fun to do while you're there on our website travelok.com. All right one thing is for sure wherever your road trip takes you you're gonna have to stop and eat at some point. So where can you find an awesome meal and some good clean fun? Well our own magic man Jeff Roberts is going to take us on a trip to Soda Steve's when we come back. That's up next right here on AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We had been hearing on the news to um, prepare that it was very likely for severe tornadoes to happen. My neighbor was standing two doors down and we were able uh, to go into his cellar and take shelter. All the trees were gone, houses were gone. Uh, it was just terrible. Until you've been there, you, you just can't imagine what, what it's like to come home and not have a home. They didn't know what to do, what the next step was, and that's our goal. We wanna help them get to the next, the next thing and, and help them feel better and not stressed you know, during this process. They have enough going on, you know, they just lost everything that we want them to feel better. It has just gone so smooth. I don't even know how to express how easy it's been. I feel so blessed to um, have AAA as our insurance. If I only had one thing to say about AAA, it would be that I never did feel like a client. I always felt like family. 
We're here to test drive some cars today. It's gonna be a head-to-head -head comparison and may the best car win. I drove Murano first and I thought, this feels pretty good. I got into the Ford Edge, I really noticed a difference. Did you say 65 degrees? Yes. Ford Edge has one up on the Nissan Murano when it comes to gas mileage. I unexpectedly fell in love with the Edge today. Come see for yourself during the EcoBoost Challenge and get a Ford Edge with 1,000 challenge cash. Visit your Ford dealer. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hi, Chuck May here with AAA Oklahoma. Did you know distracted driving causes up to 8,000 crashes a day in the U.S.? Here's another fact. Texting drivers are 23 times more likely to cause a crash than a drunk driver. And under certain circumstances, eating, smoking, or changing the station can be just as dangerous as texting or talking on your cell. So if distracted driving is that dangerous, why does it make up more than 50% of our time behind the wheel? Why do 94% of us agree that texting or emailing while driving is unacceptable, but one third of us admit to doing that while driving? And did you know that passengers, especially young children and infants, are one of the most frequently reported causes of distraction? At AAA, we're committed to making the roads safer for everyone. Help protect yourself and all the other drivers around you by avoiding distractions and staying focused on the road. To learn more, visit AAA.com. AAA, for the ones who matter most to you. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. And don't think for a minute we aren't grateful to be part of the Discover Oklahoma team and have the opportunity to travel around our great state and discovering fun places to visit and meeting wonderful people. But sometimes, just sometimes, one of those assignments comes along that the, everyone else envies. <laughs> well, the magic man, Jeff Roberts, actually got such an assignment recently, and he's taking us to Soda Steve's in Gore. Now, this is the life. Okay, we're at Soda Steve's here in eastern Oklahoma, and it could be maybe the best hidden treasure for hamburgers and chocolate nachos and even washing your hands. In the oh, that's pretty close. We'll find out more in the kitchen. So does Steve, me, and these two patties will create the Royale. This is a little trick that a guy taught me a long time ago. It works really great. Um, this is our char boiler right here. And if you'll notice and watch these burgers, we're going to let those things cook until this. See this right here? Uh -huh. That blood starts to pool. Well, when that blood starts to pool pretty regularly on both of those things, that's when we flip. Oh, it's yeah. like it's time to flip. See how we got some little pooling going on right here? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and flip right those this. things right in the same spot. All right, here we go. Now, I messed up a little bit. No, there. you did good. No, yeah. perfect. There we go. Oh, look. get it on top there. There you go. Perfect. Now we'll just let that go. Now we'll let that go. A lot of times when I'm doing that, I'll flip the ones in the back first because you get that flame up, and that way oh, you don't have to reach across the towering inferno to yeah, get Yeah, and burn your arm hair and uh, stuff. That's right. Yeah, okay. So now, this is important. Reach under there and hold it with one hand while you move it with the other. And don't like so? drop it in between because I've done that. I only tell you these mistakes because I've, I've made them before. All right, ready, now ready, put ready. your thumb right there. Ready, ready, there ready, you ready, go. Ready. Oh, look at there. So the picture out front and the one I just made, I, I, I think I at least get a C. Don't you think I get a C? I'd say more than a C. So, Steve, we did finish up the Royale. Didn't do too bad there. One of the things, now, you call it something different, but I call it a, a chocolate nacho, which is what we're going to work on now. Mm -hmm. You call it a hot fudge chocolate. Yes, it's actually called hot fudge nachos. Okay, and, and so that kind of gives it away, but if you tell people a chocolate nacho, it's funny to watch their face because they're like, what? Yeah. Is that not just awesome? That is awesome. You know you want some right now, don't you? Don't just take my word on how cool a place Soda Steve's is. It's wonderful. The, the scenery is great and the food's great and the people are really nice. So, yeah, definitely. So, the next time you're in eastern Oklahoma near the Tin Killer area and you want a great burger, you got to make it so to Steve's. And just walk in and say, Discover Oklahoma said, come on in. And if you're looking for other unique Oklahoma restaurants to visit, we have made it easy for you. Absolutely. All you have to do is order our brand new free Discover Oklahoma dining guide. And all you have to do is go to our website, travelok.com. Up in the right hand corner, it says request free brochures. Click on that and you should be receiving it in the mail in about five to seven days. That burger's looking pretty darn good. <laughs> a big thanks to the folks here at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City for hosting us. And if you have a hard time remembering that name, you can just call it the Cowboy. <laughs> I like the Cowboy. <laughs> All right, coming up next week on AAA's Discover Oklahoma.
a trip to one of the newer destinations in Sulphur, Oklahoma, the Artesian Hotel. Plus, we're taking it to the top. We'll get a glimpse inside the top of the Devon Tower when we go to Vast. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.